Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I'm going to make a Highland cow ornament. Whether you have a laser or you want to cut this with a Cricut or by hand, you can make this. The file will be linked down below. For those of you who are learning how to work with SVGs inside of XCS software, you're going to create a new file and you're going to import the SVG. Now it comes in looking a little weird. With everything selected, just size it to whatever size you'd like. Now you can put all three of these pieces for the face united and just set them to engrave. The outside will be cut. Now I like my cuts to be on a red layer. Engrave can be on any color layer you'd like. This is just so you can keep it uh, clear in your head. So now there's a couple pieces like this one we won't need. I'm not going to need the hair, but we are going to talk about it. So we can also take these two pieces of the hat, the 3D portions, and unite those, set those over to cut and move them off, put them on the red layer for cut. Now we don't need these horns. Let me just grab the first layer horn because we're going to cut out the entire piece. Now the hat is one piece. We're making a 3D hat that those two small pieces will go on to. So we do want that one to be cut and on red. This is optional. So I'm going to use faux fur for this piece because I have a billion pounds of the stuff. So if you don't have it, you can cut this. So I'm going to set it to yellow because mine is actually going to be set to ignore. And what that means inside of XCS is that it will not be processed by the laser at all. Neither will this text because I'm going to set them both to ignore. If you would like to cut it, just set it to cut and it'll be fine. So on this piece here, I'm just gonna move everything over a little bit. You can see I'm gonna make this outside edge cut and just kind of group it all together a little bit closer and get this kind of out of the way. Again, I'm not cutting these two pieces. They are set to ignore. All of this over here is set to output. Now we are going to make our SVG into a, an ornament. I made a 0.4 inch circle and a 0.25 inch circle. I'm gonna take those together. I'm going to go align horizontal and vertical align center and then subtract. What that's gonna do is give me that donut shape. So here you can see it snapped to the center of this big piece. If you don't wanna do that, highlight both and go to horizontal align center. However, I would like a little bit more room on my hanger piece and we're going to be able to move it over just a little bit. You can actually tap the arrow keys on your keyboard and that way you can see it's overlapping but we need the center of this to be full. See that? So we're good. These two pieces, again, we are not horizontal aligning them. Oh, I just moved it over. So if you accidentally mess it up, don't worry, you can either hit back or you can do the steps again to horizontal and then move this over manually with the arrow keys. But again, we want it to um, cross over so that when we select the two pieces and hit unite, we have this nice big full circle. So I'm setting everything here just to cut and I'm going to make sure this one is on engrave. There we go. And then the outside edge is cut. I just a couple of times I just make sure that I've done that because I've messed it up before. All right, so now that we have our piece, again, I'm going to ignore it, but if you're not ignoring it, here's what your file will look like. You can score one piece of the hair, copy and paste it, and cut the other piece out of wood. See that? You want the score piece to stay over and positioned like it would be uh, on top of each other. I'm going to put three millimeter basswood right into my M1 and pin it down. When I close it, you can see it's taken a picture. I'm on my uh, riser and with the honeycomb, so I choose open plane and three millimeter basswood ply. When I hit the auto distance measure, I can now know that my settings are nice and uh, dialed in. I love the S uh, M1 because so many people have really tweaked those settings to work really well. Again, I'm going to make sure that is on ignore and then everything else is cut. You can see my settings are 105 and one for cut and 7175 for engrave, okay? 
Now we're going to frame it. And this means that when we hit the start button on the machine, you can see our little laser is just mapping out where our item is going to go. Okay. Now we know that we are ready to actually process this. So if you have a fan, an inline fan or your smoke purifier, go ahead and turn that on. Select start on the machine and first select start in the software. That will make sure it sends the correct file before you hit start on the machine. So I'm going to give you real times for these things. It, um, the reason I like to show you what it looks like is because real, this is cutting. The M1 does take a little bit more time than my S1 from Xtool, but the hat only took 31 seconds. This is obviously sped up. The reason I'm giving you real time for this stuff, all these extra pieces took 49 seconds. The reason I'm telling you is because it took two and a half minutes almost to cut this actual big piece, four and change overall. But an S1 that I have that's 40 watt would do this in honestly under a minute. Now you can see I've got some little charring um, blowing to the left here. You see that? I turned on air assist for half of this. I like to show you this is what actually happened in the system. So four minutes and 28 seconds or so for the actual cut. So now I'm going to take it and because I have this charring on this side, the back looks absolutely fabulous, but I have this charring on this side, not on the other side because I had turned on air assist, we're going to get rid of it. And you can get rid of it a couple different ways. My first step is always to wipe down my edges. I get this black char everywhere and then I have to sand it if I forget this step. So we're just gonna go ahead and wipe all the edges and then take a piece of sandpaper, go over it just a couple of seconds and now I'm gonna do the center piece. And look, all that char is gone. And I'm gonna do that for each of the pieces. There's this little hat, face piece, and then on the hat I had some that I had to do. Now, I have ancient Posca pens. I use these for my rocks, so they're a little bit chunky, and I hated the way they look because I couldn't get a consistent color. So you'll see me put red on here, white on the others, but I will paint those. Now, mistakes. If you are new to this laser thing, let me show you what happens when it's not sealed. Look at this. It's bleeding. Not bleeding like bleed. It, it's, it's moving. So I just cut another piece instead and left it alone. Now I'm going to show you how I do seal them. You can seal them before painting or after. So I'm just getting an idea for where everything is going to go here and realize I really don't like the paint job of this. I actually really don't like it. So I'm just gonna tell you that I redo it. But we're going to fashion everything, but do not make it yet. And I know it's gonna be, it's frustrating, but I'll tell you, I learned so much since when I made this. I made this a few months ago, and will tell you I've learned so much since then. All right, so now for the faux fur, I'm going to use a tiny scrap. Mine ends up being about an inch and a half wide by, I think, half inch high, maybe three quarters inch high. You do not need a lot. For those of you who make gnomes or who have other pieces of just scrap fur on hand, you can get scrap fur at the craft store. You can get it at the Dollar Tree even. So just keep an eye out for that if you like the look of this. I got this on Amazon. It's not expensive. Uh, I will try and find the link and put that below for you. So you can see I'm just getting an idea by looking at it and feeling for it. Now I would never try and cut out the pattern that I have that we chose to ignore. I'd never try and cut that out. All you need is a rectangle, kids. That's it. So I'm going to cut mine a little bit big because I got like a weird little blop over here, but I'm going to even cut that down a little further. And then I'll show you the measurements so you can see. You can even lift it up a little bit if you don't like how far it hangs down over the muzzle, but this is how mine is going to look. Just like that, but painted better because I despise my paint job. Now I have a lot of people ask me, why do I leave the mistakes in? Because you'll make them. I have to tell you, learning the laser is so much fun, but it also means that you're gonna make mistakes. And I, I like to leave my mistakes in so that I can tell you how not to make them. So I went over it with red chalk paint, add a little white chalk paint underneath my 3D portion of it. And now you would think it's time to assemble. 
It's not. I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to seal it. So I use, um, I just want to show you this so that people who are asking, it's about almost one and a half inches wide and a half inch tall. All right, so for sealing it, I always pin these on here so I can get all of the sides when I get all of the front and these will hang down. I use the UV resistant acrylic clear spray paint it's amazing. And once I have that, we're going to assemble it using wood glue and super glue. So I use the super glue pen. I get them on Amazon and they're magical. I highly recommend them. But you can just use wood glue if you're patient. I'm not. So um, I'm just checking the sizes of everything, making sure I like where everything is and how I'm going to hot glue or super glue this thing on. So if you are gonna use super glue, cause I was too lazy to actually turn on the hot glue, I would get something to make sure you don't stick your finger to it because the super glue can seep through the fabric of the faux fur. Um, I also really like this Gorilla Glue pen, pen because it gives me a little time to kind of move it around. It's not an instant seal. So don't do this, go get something. I use a face mask spatula, you can use anything. Uh, just make sure you don't stick your fingers to it. So for the rest of this, it will all be a combo of wood glue and super glue. I find that this is really inexpensive and it's very quick to set. You don't technically need to clamp it, but I will show you that I actually do clamp one piece and that is the hat. The reason I clamp the hat is because the hat's the only thing that isn't perfectly flush with the wood on wood and that's because of our faux fur right so i wanted to make sure i get an amazing seal on the top of this hat so i just clamped it for less than 10 minutes while i cleaned up my laser um not very long at all so i'm just using a piece of cardboard on either side and some binder clips or you can use cheap clips from harbor freight or other um craft stores or harbor no what do you call them hardware stores Wow, <laughs> I get paid to do this for a living. Okay, so once you, that's literally all I'm doing here. I'm just making sure all the pieces are clamped down and then I can move on with the rest of it. Super glue plus wood glue gives me a couple seconds to be able to position it where I want it. And then I just fill everything else in. I think it looks a lot better with the white painted behind the, the bump out pieces, but you do you. You can cover this in uh, cardstock, you know, if you want a nice little pattern. I just use twine for mine because I think it looks rustic and that's who this is going to. You can make a ton of these in no time at all and I hope you liked it. I'd love to hear what you think down in the comment section. Also down below will be the file that I created for this project. As always, thanks for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.